Hi class, welcome to Advantage. My name is Dr. Scott Adamson, and today we're gonna take advantage of all the work that you've seen in these past videos related to the idea of derivative, but we're gonna apply it to a very specific context. Now maybe you've seen some applied problems in your calculus class, and there's, there's a lot of traditional ways that we apply calculus and the idea of derivative, but have you ever thought about applying it to the field of medicine, to the field of health sciences? Have you ever had a cold and had a cough? And while you're coughing, sometimes you wanna have uh, or think about how efficiently you cough. And so in this application, we're gonna dis uh, discover, we're gonna explore and then discover how could one have the most efficient cough? The application that we're going to pursue in this video is what you see on screen now. It says, to increase the velocity of air flowing through the trachea when a human coughs, the body contracts the windpipe producing a more effective cough. Philip Tuchinsky determined that the velocity of the air that is flowing through the trachea during a cough is V equals C times the quantity R sub zero minus R times R squared where C is a constant based on individual body characteristics, R sub zero is the radius of the windpipe before the cough, and R is the radius of the windpipe during the cough. It can be shown that the maximum velocity of the cough occurs when the derivative equals zero. Your task, find the value of R that maximizes the velocity. Let's look at how this might uh, work out using Desmos first. So using Desmos, I've entered in the velocity function that we saw from the Philip Tuchinsky model. The velocity of the air through the trachea is a function of the radius as it, as it changes size during the cough. C is a constant based on an individual's body composition. R sub zero is the just normal resting radius of the trachea and then R is the new size during the cough. And so as we just explore this with different values of C and different values of R sub zero, we can see under what conditions will we see a maximum velocity. For instance, if I just pause there, when C is five and R sub zero is 3.04, we see the maximum velocity right there. So let's see if we can find a relationship between the resting radius of the trachea and the radius during a cough. Let's choose some values that are more easy to compute. Let's, let's start with a C value of one. So when C is one and R is three, we see that there's a maximum velocity when R sub, um, the radius of the trachea is two units. Hmm two units when r sub zero is three. Let's try another one. Suppose r sub zero was four. We still see a maximum, but now the maximum is at about two and two thirds when r sub zero is four. And when r sub zero is one, for example, we see a maximum down there of about two-thirds of a unit. So as we explore this, we can see that as the radius changes, the maximum velocity changes, and we want to explore that relationship. By the way, that relationship is the same as we change the value of C. Notice if I change the value of C when R sub zero is one, the maximum velocity is still about two-thirds, 0.6667 as it shows there on Desmos. If I change C to something else, like we can even go to C is 10 or something, we see that the maximum velocity is still about two thirds. Now, if R sub zero changes, say to two for that value of C, we see that maximum velocity is now one and one third. So what is the relationship between the R sub zero, the resting radius of our trachea, and R, the radius that maximizes the velocity of the cough. That's what we want to explore uh, using more traditional calculus techniques. 
So we've explored on Desmos this relationship between the radius of the trachea at rest and the radius of the trachea during a cough to see at what relationship between those two radii do we see the maximum velocity. And maybe you could go on Desmos and play around with that too and look for those uh, that connection between the radius during cough and the radius at rest. But now we're going to explore that with the traditional calculus techniques to see what was that relationship that we saw using Desmos. So here is the model that we are using. And to begin, we're going to do a little algebra just to rewrite this model. We can do a couple of algebraic moves. First, let's distribute that constant C. So C gets multiplied by R sub zero, minus C gets multiplied by R, and then that quantity gets multiplied by R squared. Let's just do one more distribution. Let's dis distribute that R, uh, R squared. R squared gets multiplied by C R sub zero, minus R squared gets multiplied by C R to produce C R cubed. Now that will just allow us to take derivatives and think about how we're gonna find this maximum velocity a little bit better. So think about what's happening at a maximum. You saw on Desmos in that graph, that graph went up and the maximum was occurring say there, and at that spot, and only at that spot, do we see a rate of change of zero. The derivative is zero. So what we would want to explore to find out where the maximum velocity occurs is, under what conditions will the derivative be zero? So we'll take the derivative and we'll find out under what conditions the derivative is zero. So let's begin by taking the derivative. Now, we just have two terms here. And to take the derivative, we have r squared, we have an r cubed. We're gonna take the derivative using the power rule. Now keep in mind that c is a constant and r sub zero is a constant c is that same constant. So as we take the derivative, c r sub zero is just a constant multiplier, a coefficient, and so when we take the derivative using the power rule, we'll, we'll do this. The two will drop out front, and we'll get two times c r sub zero. We'll reduce the power by one. Likewise here, the c is that coefficient or that constant multiplier, so by the power rule, the three will come out front, get multiplied by that c, and then decrease the power by one. So my derivative is, is here. Now the interesting thing, the, the, to locate this maximum velocity, we wanna know where the derivative is zero. So we will now work algebraically to find out under what conditions does this derivative come out to be zero. Now to do that, we need some algebra work through that. Let me just rewrite our work here. We have 2c r sub 0 r minus 3c r squared is equal to 0. Now what you might notice here is there's a common factor of c. There's a common factor of r. So let's factor out a c r. If we factor out a c r, what remains in this first term is a 2 r sub 0. What remains in the second term is a minus 3 r. Now again, we're interested in that maximum velocity, that place where the derivative is 0. And so we now have a, a, a product here. c times r is getting multiplied by this quantity to produce 0. The only way you can multiply two quantities and get 0 is if one of the quantities is zero. So either C times R is gonna be zero, or two R sub zero minus three R is gonna be zero. Now in this case, remember C is that constant, so if we divide both sides by C, R will be zero. Now let's think about what that means. If the radius of your trachea is zero, <laughs> it's closed, and the velocity of air through it is zero. That is not a maximum velocity. That would be a minimum velocity. That is not what we're interested in this case. We're interested in the relationship between the trachea at rest, just normal breathing right now as you're breathing in and out, and what's the radius of the trachea during a cough. 
So let's look at this condition and see if we get something more interesting. So 2r sub 0 minus 3r equals 0. Remember, r sub 0 is that normal resting trachea radius. r is the radius of the trachea as it changes during a cough. Let's see what the relationship is. So 2r sub 0, if we add 3r to both sides, will equal 3r. And then if we divide both sides by 3, 2 thirds of a normal resting trachea is equal to r. Now we don't have full evidence yet, but the, my hunch would be, I hope your hunch would be as well, that this is gonna produce the maximum velocity of air through the trachea. That is, if the radius of your trachea during a cough is two thirds of the normal resting trachea radius, that's where you're gonna get maximum airflow. But how do we know for sure it's a maximum? We have one more thing to do to find out. So common sense would probably tell us that if the radius of your trachea during a cough was zero units, that there would be no airflow, and that, therefore we would not consider that to be the maximum velocity of air through the trachea. But in this case, if the radius of your trachea during a cough is two thirds of its normal resting radius, that might produce the maximum airflow. Let's see though, mathematically speaking, if that's really the case. Here's how we do it. That maximum occurs at that peak of that function. And at the peak of that function, we would describe that function as being concave down. Now to mathematically verify that the function is concave down, we would do this. Let's take the second derivative. Now our first derivative was this expression here. Let's now work on a second derivative. 2c r sub zero times r. Now remember, r sub zero is a constant, the normal trachea radius, 2c is a constant. So all we have is a constant multiplier, a coefficient times r, a linear function. The derivative of that linear function would just be 2c r sub zero. Over here, 3c is a constant, a coefficient. So we'll use the power rule. Two comes down front, decrease that power by one. Now when that two comes out front, it'll multiply by that three C. So we'll get minus six C R. Now what we're interested in is, like I said, if, if that velocity is truly at a maximum, then the function would be concave down. And if the function's concave down at that point, then the second derivative will be negative. So let's explore that and see if that's true. So we think that when the radius of the trachea during a cough is two thirds of its normal resting radius, then we would have a maximum. We would have a maximum if the second derivative was negative there. Let's see. So two C R sub zero minus six C times R, where R is two thirds R sub zero. Let's just algebraically simplify this a bit. 2c r sub zero minus. Now, 2 thirds of six is gonna be four. So if we just simplify this a little bit, it's gonna be four c r sub zero. And then two c r sub zero minus four c r sub zero is negative two c r sub zero. Now from this model that we saw at the beginning, C is a positive constant, the normal radius of your trachea is positive, so negative two C R sub zero is gonna be a negative number indeed. So what we would say is this, since the second derivative is negative two C R sub zero, we can make a claim that that number will be less than zero. Therefore, the function V is concave down And therefore, since the function is concave down, we can claim that when r is equal to two thirds of r sub zero, that is truly a maximum. We have maximum airflow.